Hello everybody and uh, welcome back to the third part in this main menu tutorial. Uh, this one I think I'll just be focusing on the uh, new game, uh, saving and loading information. I did player name, player gender I think I might put as well in. So to begin with what we want to do is underneath at the top of the script which is loaded up in my development. Uh, underneath is first menu. Uh, what we could also do is add a private ball underscore is new game menu equals false. And that's setting up for the new game. Now what we also want to do is create another one down I think it might be better underneath our oh, void first menu function so I'm gonna put it void new game options and also what we need to do in that is copy the name and put it in the on GUI and just put if underscore is New game menu. Uh, this is what I don't like about one of development. Anyway, is new game menu, and that's set up now for us. Now, what we want to do is also we want to create a few private variables as well. This is what we're going to use to uh, as the the variable names to store our saved data's into. So what we want to do is create a private string underscore player name equals and just leave it empty this is this default uh, the main reason being is when we're going to call we're going to do a check what we're going to do is in the start function we'll be getting the save data and if it doesn't have it it'll have it as not is that is equal to is equal to that so we can always check to see if player name is equal to empty string pretty much and then if it is we can then if we've been able to tell the main menu that it doesn't have an actual player name so we can not display anything in the low game or we can display a warning message when creating a new game if this has actually got something in it so it doesn't actually launch a new game so we're going to put public string, private string player name is equal to that. Uh, what we could do also is, yeah, I'll just do a private string underscore player gender equals empty string again. Now that they're all empty, we can go down to the first menu and delete this in the new game button. What we want to do is set uh, underscore is first menu is equal false and underscore is new game menu equals true. Now that one's sorted, we also want to go into the if underscore level select menu equals true, logo menu equals true, and options menu equals true. We also want to another, put another or in there and put underscore is new game menu equals equals true as well and if it's equals equals true we also want to add we also want to add underscore is new game menu equals false so now it will display the back button on the new game menu and it will also back out the new game menu as well now if we were to go into Unity and try this out, click New Game. So we've got the back button here, and in the New Game it displays nothing, which is good for us at the moment. We don't actually need anything. But on the other hand, we could, if we copy the uh, the sub menu tile, you can copy from any one of these that we've put it in. So we're just going to put it in here, and I'm just going to call it New Game. 
so people could tell what menu they're actually in. So now if I click new game, we've got the little new game in there now. Could have just the size of that a bit more, but I think that's alright as it stands. Now underneath that, we also want to create a few things. So you want to put underscore player name is equal to GUI dot text field, which is a new rect. Uh, I want to turn from actually. Let's do it uh, 100 from the left. Screen dot height divided by 2 minus 100. Do it also 200 long and also 25 high. And leave an empty blank one. And then that should draw a GI text field. But that's just going to draw the field. And we also want some text before that. So if we do GUI dot label equals is uh, is a new rect which is ten from the left a screen dot height divided by two minus one hundred. What's the uh, 90 long and 25 high and we're actually going to give that a name we're going to say that player name and just do some just do a little double dot after that as well if we save that off and we take a look at it in unity we click new game there we go we've got player name and we've got a text field and I could type in there but at the moment it won't do anything. And the reason for that is if you go back to here, you'll see that I've added these speech marks. That's actually wrong. You want to do underscore player name. So it's going to be the same name as you're calling it. So and player name is equal to GUI text field, and they're the parameters for the text field comma and then it's actually a player name so it's got the same name so that actually saves the name you type in to player name now if we type if we go back to save that off and go back to unity and click new game we should be able to type here I could put T junkie and we've got it in there now and that'll do nothing at the moment but you get the idea now what we also do is create another one. Underscore player gender equal to GUI dot text field is a new rect. Uh, and so we're gonna do a hundred screen dot height divided by two minus this is twenty-five, we're gonna do it thirty-five. We're gonna minus thirty-five of that, so it's gonna be sixty-five. It's minus sixty-five. We're going to do it 200 and we're going to do it 25 high again. And we're going to go to underscore player gender. And get it off. Now we also want to copy the label as well and put it above the player gender. Let's separate these out a bit. And we're going to put that. And just call it player gender. But we also know that it is screen dot height minus 65, so we're going to put minus 65 up here as well. So we save this off. And go back to, to Unity and then click Play. We've got player name, player gender. These could do with shifting over about an extra 20 pixels, I think. But I could type this in male as well. And now. If I go over to here, let's budge it over a little bit more actually. So where it says new text field, that's 100, we'll just put it 120. And do the same for the player name as well, the text field for that. So it is 120 is the first parameter. And then click play. Then new game, there we go, separate out. Get away with not having these boxes so big, but people have, can have long names. And a made up gender if you're doing an RPG. 
and playing their own play agenda. Right now, last thing but not least, what I'm going to do is create a button. If GUI.button is a new rect, I'm going to do it 10 from the left, screen.height, divided by 2 minus 30. Uh, and then set it to uh, one fifty. That's just the standard size we've been doing buttons. And then that's the button set up. So I'm just going to put that as create character. And we also want to add that in a clause as well. See so if underscore player name is not equal to. So you want to do exclamation mark, then equal sign, and then you just put the little empty brackets. So we're just saying if player name is not equal to these brackets here. And we want to do two and symbols for logical and, which basically means this and this has to happen before this will execute. So underscore player gender is not equal to the speech marks again. Now make sure you enclose this in brackets as well. Or parentheses. So now, the, the make sure we have to have the player, we have to have a player name to be filled in and a player gender to be filled in before this button for the create character will actually be there. However, what I want to do is I want to copy that button we've got, that if block, and then underneath this if block for the player name and player gender, just type else, and then create some rounded brackets, and then just paste it in there. And then this will be generating. So this button, will, this button will render, will be on screen if the player has not input any information yet, saying so generating. And this button's going to be absolutely blank. So the button won't do anything. But however, if they do fill out both of these, then it will activate this button here, the create character button, which will actually load up the new level. So what I want to do is want to go type in this to save data now player prefs dot set string because if you notice up here these are strings oh where did I lose all my stuff player string dot set string and we want to do underscore player name and then an empty string after, but the empty string we're just going to call it player space name. Then what we do is you want to do exactly the same for the gender as well. So you want to do player prefs dot set string and the let's call player gender, and then do some more speech marks. And set that is player gender. And after it's done that, we also want to put application dot load level. Oh, that's not that. There we go. Load level. And then what we're going to do is type in the scene you want to load. So mine's level zero one. So with that all done. If we're going to do and it works. I might add. Because I might have got the values mixed up. If I click new game, see generating button shows up. So we've got nothing in there. Type player name, uh, T junkie. And gender male. And then notice how the button's changed to create a character now. Now if we create a character, there you go, it's loaded up scene one. Now if we back out there, we need to check now to make sure that it actually does save the character data. Now what I want to do, there's a couple of ways we could do this, but I'll show you the basic one. The more easier one, because you're going to need to know this anyway. If we go to your C drive. Actually, it's not a C drive. 
if you go start then run and type in reg edit r e g e d i t hit enter it'll ask you it might pop a window just click yes and then you get all this now to find where you need to go however it will be in h key current user software and then if you've not changed any of your company settings inside unity it will be under default company and whatever your project's called mine's called main menu tutorial now if i click there you'll also see that i've got two values saved now well you, you'll probably see a graphics quality one as well and a default one but you got my name t junkie there see data is player name mail for player gender so it's actually saving our character data now so now we know it's actually saving that will bring us on to our next tutorial where we go into the load game we do the load game menu and the load game menu will, will display our character name our character gender that we've created and we'll also what we'll do is have a create a button to load the current level that the character's on so we'll also add another save in there to in this here to save the current level that the character's on and we'll also do it so we'll have a delete button so you can delete your character if you don't want any more inside the level select menu or the load game menu sorry but that's it for now I've been TJuggy thank you for watching tutorial level 3 part 3 sorry and I will see you again in the next tutorial thank you goodbye